Yeah. Motherfuckers ready? Uh, yeah, let me grab my phone. Okay, I have my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been next to you. Yeah, it sure has. Up, oh, up, oh, which is connected to the Bluetooth. All right, let's get right in a oh, second. God. Oh, God. Oh, God, what am I doing? Less body, more face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, thank, nice you, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> That's nice part, man. You guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> Are we? Are we? Never. Are we? Hey, two hours and 20 minutes, 10 minutes late. Let's get it. It's all right. One more gang signs. What are you doing? I'm counting down. I'm not throwing gang signs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering whether or not we're going to start a podcast on time is like worrying about whether or not the sun's going to come up. Like it's just the- <laughs> not going to happen. Oh, we did last. Did we last week? No, last, you know what? I think it was, was like- last week. Last week was on. Last week was on point. Yeah. yeah, I I usually two works for me, but I just I slept for thirteen fucking hours. I was tired. Cheap. I know yeah. you do that. I can't even sleep for thirteen hours. Well, I sleep like three hours a night during the week, so then we should fix that. No, my sleep schedule is all sore. I it's sleep three hours in the morning. That's yeah, I, I have no, I have no schedule right now, so everything's all out of whack. All right, three gang signs, two. I'm putting one. all these in. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Mauricio. I'm here with Ryan, KD, and James Yo. with a cold backdrop. Fuck you for that. Um, I almost this... wore a Barcelona shirt. Why is it cool backdrop? Because you put a I bunch of losing you. teams behind him in a closet. It just looks uh, sporty. Oh, you, you know said. what I mean? Why you, you got did? a bunch of he got a bunch of fucking Raiders? What is that? Are those scarves? Uh, Ryan, <laughs> you say you're going to wear a Barcelona shirt? I almost did. I, ha- I have one. I have one upstairs. I just decided to go Mets instead. Doesn't say backdrop. Uh, Why do you have a crazy? What's up with all those like skinny towels? <laughs> They're scarves. Are they scarves? Yes. Yeah, it's a soccer thing. It what is fuck, a scarf thing. collection. Wow. It's, it's, it's a, I have <laughs> I have some catalog have some, and shit. I have some soccer <laughs> scarves too. Yeah, man. It's a thing. Scarves and soccer are somehow a thing. I don't know how that's. I got started. one scarf that my ex girlfriend made for me, and I should light it on fire, but I kind of like the color. Yeah, dude. Those those handmade scarves are fucking warm. I'll give him that. <laughs> it's mad uncomfortable though. Is it scratchy? It's, yeah, it's just tough. It's hard. I don't know what the fuck she did with it. It's just like, eh. Cool. But it took her a year to do something. She thought she was going to take cool. two. <laughs> <laughs> I, hold on. I missed that. Sorry. She probably put some voodoo in that shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Let's get this mm-hmm. underway. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess the best news I've had in like a while is that the Bundesliga and the UFC are back. So finally, we get some fucking yeah. sports back. I'm, I'm super excited, of course, as Bundesliga, Bundesliga is the league that I love the most, and then I also love UFC. But is this too rushed? I mean, I'm so yeah. the UFC. I don't think is enough of a telltale sign. Like whatever we see tonight, I don't think is going to be an indication of whether it's working. I think it'll be when we watch a soccer game with nobody in the stadium. Well, same thing with the UFC with nobody in the arena. It sounds sad. I, yeah, I think Joe Rogan is, is Joe Rogan going to do it. COVID last night. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, <laughs> they, they um, I think they started the testing yesterday or the day before. Oh, that's a great idea. No, because they, they flew them in and then they quarantined everybody and tested everybody. And if you test a positive, you can't fight. So. Yeah, uh, his name is Ronaldo Zosa, and he's not going to be able to fight, obviously. Because... I mean, but that's that's the way you have to do it. Like, before every game, every single player is going to have to get tested. It's got to be that 15-minute whatever, and they're going to have to wait for the results. And then if somebody – I don't care if it's your star fucking player. If you test positive, mm, it's going to be a, a, a crapshoot. 
Yeah, but it's also the way that, because I, I know this from Iron, I haven't done trainings for the past uh, almost a month now. They were doing it in groups of fives and very away from each other, keeping in the, keeping the six but feet you and all of that. There's going to be but 22 still, people on the field. That's what I'm saying. It, it, and I, a ref, and right. linesmen, and, and linesmen, coaches, and, and people on the bench. Staff, I mean, right. if they get tested right before the match. Yeah, but you have to quarantine everybody by themselves right before mm-hmm. the match. Like, there has to be individual rooms where they all get tested. Such a process, dude. It's a process. I, but, I, there's multiple, there's, but there's other facets to that. There's, the, uh, there's whether or not the test itself is accurate, which is a thing now. There's um, whether or not the fact that you can – it can incubate and you could show negative – um, before you actually are um, able to test positive on the... I'm, it, here's the thing. Uh, I think at this point, at least for them, they're, they don't have to go play. I mean, they're taking a calculated risk as adults. Yeah, um, yeah but if your employer tells you that they got to play, you're going to have to play. It's all yeah, I mean, I'm, sure, I'm sure if you are, you know, a Bayern player and they're like, oh, you got to play, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to call Miss Markle real quick. <laughs> shut Ang- this whole fucking shit down again if you want to angela it. said it was cool so she no she got she got tired of getting harassed about it she's like oh, i got man. a country to run and there's covid <laughs> everywhere and you guys are bitching at me about soccer you want to kick a ball Fuck yeah. it. Yeah. if everybody wants to stay at home and watch soccer fine right parks are still fucking closed give the people something to do <laughs> at, least, at least with Germany, you got a country that's actually doing a good job with the contact tracing. And yes. In the, the UFC is probably what I got the biggest. They, they have had a lot of practice with uh, contact tracing. <laughs> wow. and, uh, they did a fantastic job like 60 years ago. So Very organized. Very, very, or- very organized. Very Nobody organized. knew about it. <laughs> Trying to be less controversial, so I'm just going to mosey away from that one. Um, I mean, it's just a matter – like, to me, the, the big thing is going to be the after effects, right? Like, it, it'll probably go off without a hitch. I mean, the biggest hitch is what you have this fighter that just tested positive. Yeah. But it's going to be the aftermath. And as far as um, who would it – if they have fucking end up finding out the four cameramen or some producer or something who's there running stuff behind the scenes and then everybody starts dropping. Well, I mean, at, at the end of the day – shut it down. You just shut it down. You, you did a trial run. You made a mistake and then – you shut it's, it down. I guess I, to me, it speaks just more to the fact that, like, right now with what we've done as a country over the last two months, which is still nowhere near enough to what we should be doing, I hate this idea that people are trying to get back to normal when it's not fucking normal. When it's, well, it's I, I don't think that's nor- that's not normal at all. I mean, there there's seventy, sixty thousand people who aren't in the stands. You can't tell me that if a UFC fight goes on and people get a sense of what sports was like again, that's not going to be something in the back of the minds of MLB, NFL, NBA. Or your average shop that wants to open up because people are starting to trend towards normal. You're already seeing people are already tired of being fucking home. There are more people that are going out now. If you reach a certain point, and the more, it's the reason you're seeing all these fucking pandemic videos and all this other bullshit. Oh, that made me so, so angry. But it's getting to a level where you have people that are frustrated with the situation on, at hand, and now they're just, there's fatigue. That's mm-hmm. it. And yep. the more you get things to get normalized, yeah. the more people are just going to come yeah. to a fact. I agree work. with that from, like, from like a soccer point of view. This is the first league out of, I don't know, fucking 10 leagues in Europe that is opening back up. And so are all of the other leagues also going to open back up just because I mean, this league of it? It's the NHL insane. came out with their step-by-step. I think the MLB is doing it today, maybe this weekend. They're coming out with at least, like, a game plan. Okay. Ah? Uh-huh. Hey, um, that was terrible. Well, uh, uh, there, I got La Liga went back to training too, by the way. Yeah, training, I mean, but not games, right? Yeah, yeah. There's like, so wait, is Bundesliga playing today or no? Oh, next, next weekend. weekend starts on Friday. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I am. When did you Monday. start training? Uh, it's about a month now. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. they they start all Bundesliga teams started training about a month ago, and uh, now they're gonna play. Close the doors. Virginia is starting to sort of open a little bit the golf courses and parks i think are going to reopen mm. next week i mean golf course golf is fine just you got your own cart the way i play golf i'm not around anybody anyway <laughs> uh this is getting hacked into the woods somewhere plus i think fauci said that sunshine and open air it's harder much harder to catch the covid oh really yeah i think sunlight kills it like in five seconds or something. Huh. 
Uh, it, definitely. It, it shows ahead. under UV light in certain circumstances, the virus doesn't last as long on surfaces yeah. or what have you. It still stays, it still can be airborne outside and can create oh, it, but I'm, if I'm you got the wind blowing and things like that, it makes it easier. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm be playing like future. Mask on, baby. Woo. Nice. Now I'll be like, fuck it, mask off. But <laughs> it's going to start mask on. I can't um, wait. I'm going to go play a solo round next weekend. And I, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm keeping my black ass at home. I'm going to continue to ignore soccer. And I'm getting used to life as it is right now. Yeah. I mean, not I, terrible. I'm a, I, first of all, UFC, I'm very excited. I can't lie. Yes. I can't lie. Yes. And honestly, these are people, and I get that there's cameramen and, and medics. But these people get paid to maybe die in a ring anyway. So if there is no. anybody who would be like, nah, fuck COVID, it would be them. Come on, man. So, no. I mean, terrible thing. I won't be watching yes. the UFC fight either. I'm just, I'm not, not, no, I'm not on board with anybody rushing this shit and getting to a point in which there, it's just not, and it's not me out of protest. It's also the fact that there's a versus on tonight and I want to fucking see, uh, <laughs> I'd rather see that shit while well, everybody fucking quarantine on IG Live. That's where I'll be. Who is it? <laughs> Who is it? Um, it's uh, fucking, um, God damn it. Jill Scott, Eric about it? Yes, Jill Scott, Eric about it. Oh, like, fuck me. I, I don't yeah. give a shit about UFC. I'm watching Jill Scott and Eric about it. Go. Here's the thing I'm good at multitasking. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, yeah, no. I can't wait for that one either. Yeah, that's going to be well, fucking for, awesome. for anyone who is excited about UFC, Tony Ferguson and Justin Gaethje, I think it's going to be a great fight. Uh, I still wish Tony would have fought. too, right? Yeah, I still wish Tony would have fought Habib, which that will be the, the ultimate fucking the fight that I will watch. Yeah, yeah um, Harry Zahudo and Dominic Cruz is also going to be really fucking good. Nganu is going is to kill Jerzinho. Yeah, I know. Nganu is not human. He's like, he's a fucking monster, dude. Yeah. He's and then gonna we got kill. Uh, we got a yeah. former uh, NFL player. Who? Uh, isn't don't say Greg Hardy. Yeah, Greg Hardy's fighting tonight. Uh, he is. Yeah, he's on the card. More I, I mean, I, I'm watching. definitely not watching. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching. Greg Hardy almost won his very first fight, and then he accidentally didn't he illegally elbow somebody while they were on the ground. Yeah, idiot. He didn't know. He didn't know. Yeah, that that and Ganu fight uh, against Jairzinho. Jairzinho is 10 and 0, but I don't think he's had anybody the uh, caliber of oh. Ganu. And Ganu is just a fucking monster. He's going to destroy him. Um, another fight that I was surprised that it was going to be a, a prem card um, type of fight it's uh, Anthony Pettis and Cerrone. Ooh, I that's thought a night? Cerrone, yeah, I thought Cerrone was done, but he's going to be a, a preliminary card fight. Hmm. That's That shows you how fucking. How much have they dropped on level? Same thing with Pettis. Cowboy. Uh, yeah, if Cowboy loses tonight, I mean, just, just yeah, he's got to retire. Just what go, like bro. Forty-two. I don't think so. It's another thirty-six something. But it's like, a just, right? yeah, yeah. But the beginning yeah. is on ESPN, ESPN Plus. Yeah. So chance of paying for that shit. Ain't nobody. But, all right. <laughs> Buy a seventy-dollar <laughs> fucking UFC fight to watch motherfuckers contract Corona. <laughs> I got no goddamn <laughs> unemployment check. Still haven't even cleared UFC, yet. UFC two forty nine Corona. Yeah, I ain't with that shit. I'm good. Yeah, but that fight's gonna be cities, good. I've been playing City Skylines. I'm all right. I just built the whole city. <laughs> uh, other than that, it's right. a women's straw weight uh, between Carlos Barza and Michelle Waterson. That's also gonna probably gonna be good. It's yeah, probably gonna be good. No, but other nothing... than that, uh, the most exciting one is gonna be Kukui Ferguson versus Gaethje. So I hope they don't get they don't get the Corona. I hope they fight good. So. Yeah, I mean, and I hope I hope that they do the smart thing and quarantine all the fighters after the fight for 14 days, and then make sure that there's testing in between, just to make sure that oh, this, Dana, this the, actually the, worked. Dana's gonna probably want to do it every other weekend. Yeah, but that's 14 weekend. days. Or every weekend is what I meant. Sorry. Well, every other weekend is is probably better. Also, congratulations, to Alex Morgan. Oh, she just had a baby two days ago. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. Charlie Elena, or something like that. She was working out too. Yeah, she she's keeping it tight in she pregnancy. She lost that uh, that IG bracket, the um the game of oh, really? bracket. What? She lost the Michaela Maroney in the final. Oh come know, on, the gymnast. Michaela Baloney, you know what I'm saying? That's fucking Baloney. I remember bro. now. That's like the one that made the smirk face. Yeah, she's fine. Nah, finer than Alex Morgan, bro. Come on, got, who's got more gold medals? Wait, how old are they? Twenty four and thirty. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm not with objectifying women, so just, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I, I forgot that you. you <laughs> guy that sent guy that sends us whoa, Instagram whoa, 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 posts. Whoa. Just because I'm aware of stuff. Simply objectifying women based on their looks. Just literally <laughs> by I vote. I have to keep. I have to keep aware of what's happening in the zeitgeist. And I respect. So we can, so we can what, fight it. So we can fight hey, the. Power. You have just to lose the battle, bro. One lose must know your enemy. Not um, just lose the battle. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's Kenny hates women. It's anyway, Super Sun Tzu right now. Wow. First podcast to not watch sports. I mean, come on. Wow. wow. I, I ran a bookstore and I can't read. So I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I work for an insurance company. You think my black ass had insurance? <laughs> it's the first thing they teach you. <laughs> uh, I was like, how much does that cost? No. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking funny. Uh, moving uh, on, uh, was there any NHL drama this week or the past week? What happened? Um, was yeah. I'm wearing a cap set, too. Huh? Light <laughs> sick. So, this oh, story, yeah. so, somebody hacked into uh, Brandon Leipzig and his brother who played for Heck I what, their IG or whatever? It, yeah, they were just having like a group chat. Somebody hacked into it. And then exposed, I guess they were saying a bunch of misogynistic shit. Hold on. Wait, so the Cavs released him? Yeah, and his yeah. brother. This is where it goes too far for me. His brother, who is a co- collegiate athlete, also got released from his college. What were they, what were they saying? They're just, they're talking about. I like, don't know everything they said. I, I just saw the one text that said it, that it, what, she was big. Yeah, it's, it wasn't great. Like, if that had been public. Like, nobody would say that in public and expect not to get, you know, repercussions. Right. But this is a private conversation. Like, and trust me, I'm uh, not, look, I'm not bad. I don't think what they said was great, but I don't think it, if somebody hacks into my emails and goes through my emails, like, that's not, that's not for them to see. Like, there's client material in there. Don't is throwing. You see that. It, it's just, you know, I, I think that Leipzig probably- Donald Sterling. Is too harsh. That's different, though. That's a hundred percent different. Why? How is Donald Sterling different? It was yeah, right. secretly recorded. I want, I want you to listen to what Donald Sterling was saying and do it. it was bad. And his actions over forty years. His of actions were a lot worse than the conversation. Actually, the conversation wasn't that bad. I'm paying. I'm. I'm hooking you up with this lifestyle, and all you want to do is fuck a bunch of black guys. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not okay. Not to mention, she was constantly fucking trying to get him to say inflammatory shit. Felt like a setup the entire time. No, but, but he's a piece of shit. I don't. He think, is a piece of shit. I, I don't think Brandon Leipzig is nearly on the same level. Brandon Leipzig yeah. is on that where, level. On where that it goes level too be- far for me is his brother. I. I mean, like that. If you're a professional, I don't know everything that they said. That's one thing. That's that. That's where it comes down to the cracks of it. Is that it's one thing if he was if he was just saying misogynistic things. There's a, there's a whole thing that goes with that as far as from a commercial viability standpoint, from a business thing, um, which is they went hard on the misogynistic talk, like real hard on that. Not to mention casual talk about drug use, doing blow, coke, all kinds of stuff. Then on top of all of those things. You have him legitimately get talking shit about teammates and former teammates on yeah. the thing, talking about how this person's wife was so fucking fat. If I'm in a locker room, if I'm running a team, I can't trust this fucker at all if he's talking behind the backs right. of other teammates. And right. That's my thing. It's not even about, I don't even think it was just the misogynistic standpoint as much as he can't be in a locker room where somebody's going to look at this dude and be like, yeah. I'm cool knowing that you're going to talk mad shit behind my back. Not going to happen. It's it, He's done because of that. It's the same thing that but happened with his, it, uh, Nick Young. Uh, as far as the uh, the locker room, what was the uh, – It what? was uh, – Who was taking those videos? D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. Yes. D. Russ. That, if it wasn't for his talent being on that fucking level, it would have been a hard-pressed thing to think that anybody in the locker room was going to be yeah. okay. With you. Well, I mean, he got shipped out. <laughs> He that's, did. What I'm that's what I'm saying. But the only reason he still got a gig is he got shipped out level. somewhere else. Yeah, my, my, my biggest issue is with his little brother. Like, if you're, you know, 18, 19, your brother's, you know, a professional sports player, you, you're kind of going to do and say what he's doing. I, don't, I, I think that that's fucked up. 
look, it, it's the same thing I'll say even on this podcast. Like, or I just feel bad for him. I mean, I, I don't know yeah. whether it's the right move or not, but I feel bad for his little brother. Brandon Leipzig, I think if, if he was a Kuznetsov, no way he's gone. No way. He, and it, it's his first year in Washington. We don't, we don't really need him. So, I, so I, I, don't, get, I get why they did it professionally, but I think, I, I think I just, they should just was, let him like, go, go to like, close, too much. And climb, a closed space. Let him sit there for like five minutes, do whatever, and come out, and then you're good. Yeah. Uh, it's just weird. I, I think – Fighting Kadeem. Yeah. Don't give me that look. I, <laughs> Don't give me that look. I mear. mean, yeah, he's a hockey player. I'm sure they drop Mitch real quick and get and just be done with it. Yeah. That, but anyway, he, I don't th- – I think it got blown out of team, proportion. It went, it went over. It's, it's the – the misogynistic stuff is you can you can say a certain thing as far as it being a private conversation. The same way that I'm 100% certain that if I become anything in life, somebody's just going to replay old episodes of ASOS so that my entire thing is canceled. But at the end of the day, as much as I might try to put things into context or people might know my heart, this, that, and the other, you're still responsible for the shit you said. Yeah, and you can say just, anything you want. You just have to deal with the consequences. And, and I'm that's a where I'm a fucking believer in that shit. But if you're, if you're part of an organization, and especially an organization like the Caps, who – more than any other sport in D.C. is the most across gender lines that I've seen um, in that city. And knowing what it is that uh, – how it is that women love the Caps. And you have can't you seen have Braden somebody- Holtby and or Tom Wilson speaking of objectifying men? Beautiful but, men. Beautiful men. But it's – it's huh? you can't there, – there's, there's a certain part from a business two. standpoint when it comes to the – but once he went with the teammates and the former teammates – there's no more trust in that locker room. Like, I have, I have no, I have no doubt in my mind now that I'm th- thinking through this that the front office probably called up Tom Wilson because that's off Ov, and they were like, "What do you think?" And Ov was probably drinking beer, playing video okay, games. Fuck and was like, mm, "Not in my locker room." And then <laughs> and, and he fucked you off. You don't do that shit. It never works out. Yeah. If you saw, you always somebody's got to go. Somebody has to go. I think, I think he was, I think he was, this was his last year anyway. So I'm not, they probably wouldn't have re-signed him. So it's probably not even that big of a hit. That's my thing. Uh, it's not, it's not a huge deal. Like, it's just a matter of like, um, what, what he said was pretty big. If you read through all the text, like it was, he was going hard at it. Really? Um, I didn't see all that stuff. All right. No, nah, man. They're talking about like, uh, this one chick, like, Hey man, yo, she's got a boyfriend. He was like, all, all the better. She has one of those rainy nights. She can come over here, like do blow, do this, that, and the other. I'm like, damn, son. Like they I had mean, it down to a science where it wasn't just words. Hockey players do blow. Through that, Facts. they're not just words. They're talking about all these women that they bagged, how it is they bagged them, how it is they're going about this, and going about that. How it is this chick used to be hot, now she's a fat. So this, that, it. How, they, how do I delete all hard. the content on my phone? <laughs> Yeah, well, how do we delete it? <laughs> right. how, how do I how do I erase this device? All right, I, I got I got a I got an opinion on this. So right out of the window. If the caps, if just like the the owner and everybody like on the exec teams or whatever, they saw those messages, he would still be on the team. I think it's the fact that everybody else saw it, and now they're gone. It's a distraction. It's not. It's not necessary. But a distraction it's- for what? They got eight months to figure it out. Yeah, they must have figured out, but every time that they're going to see this dude, they're going to be asking him or his teammates, what do you think about your guy that did this? And then they're going to have to do that whole, yeah. you know, it was just I mean, a conversation. Just, he was he talking, wasn't a he star player. Do. He wasn't a star player, so it, he's expendable. That's, I think that is the number one thing. He didn't, have, po- the, he didn't have the talent to overcome what he said. Here's I'm still pissed about his brother. We'll never give that up. Look, four guys talking in the end of the day, like um, the same reason that like when we talk about doing a podcast outside of sports, I've had people to say, well, you know, you can got it. Maybe it turns in the locker room and talk this and the other. There are certain, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have those kinds of conversations with people. Like, Not really. Do you, like, I don't, and I'd admit it if I did, because nobody's going to see my shit, but it's like. Yeah, I'm, th- I'm 31. Do you have those like people talk about the locker room talk, boys mm-hmm. locker room talk? I don't know anybody that carries themselves like that, regardless of their age. I, I will you're, stop. Like, just I will stop for a nice sundress, but I won't comment. Um, but I will stop for a nice sundress. I mean, you would hear shit like that in high school. In yeah, the, when yeah. you're immature, young, and doing yeah. dumb shit. But what I'm saying when you get so, and I mean, like, you could say the same thing in college. Yeah, of course. 
No, yeah, I, I didn't. didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't I, I guess I did in college for a while when I was, you know. No, r- I'm saying like if you're in the locker room in college, like you're going to hear some shit like that. No, but he's saying locker room the, talk just in general. Like, in general. If we were that, sitting that, around like this. Yeah. Oh. But like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, I roomed with six other dudes that were 20. Like, yeah, like, like, you're like, going gonna to hear some wild shit. You're going to hear some well, wild we, shit. We've, had, like wild we've had conversations off the pod about sex, about relationships, about women, about guys, about a lot of stuff. And at the end of the day, I'm looking at you, Ryan. You like chicks with dicks. Um, the, <laughs> the, there are no uh, chicks with dicks, only bros with tits. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> I'm a bro with tits. I don't even know if I'm <laughs> so, gay yet, dude, so relax. He, but the thing is, like, we'll talk to a certain degree, but you always knew the line between, all right, this is clearly a joke, compared to, all right, this is what I believe on something, but it's never gone to a point where we're, like, demeaning people or... Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, true. we're grown. Like, yeah, how, how, think, how old was Kit, homeboy? He's 26. And his little brother was, what, 18? 19, 17? 18. Uh, he said he was still in college, right? Yeah, he got oh, released just from his college. Too. It was more than just them two on that text there. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, uh, yeah. He's twenty. He's twenty five. So, to me, it's you're done. Like, there's if that's how, how many, you, if that's how many how you people on that thread. I there counted a, at least there three was a or bunch. four, but they were like some of them were scrambled out. Other ones you don't have the name. But it's just like the icon. And you could tell like some people changed their icon as time went on. So it was like it was weird. That's uh, how how old is Jeremy? I mean, be it's, 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 stupid, it's stupid to say, like that's what. Like certain, conversa- certain conversations I understand are private and like you shouldn't necessarily, the conversation I have with you guys about something personal, even if it comes across as not necessarily politically correct. Can, t- can I tell you something, Kitty, something real quick? There's a conversation that you and I had that I don't remember at all and I still don't and I'm so scared of what I said in that conversation. I have no idea what I told you or what we talked about. Also, was, alcohol, was alcohol involved in this conversation? <laughs> also, his, his little brother it, was uh, at University of Manitoba. Which is a good hockey school. Oh. Is that in the Canadians? Huh? Is that in Canada? Ma- Manitoba? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> He's a foreigner. <laughs> Manitoba. Dude, I so, didn't know it either. So if you, ran, if you ran through the United States, there's another place yeah, on top. Like I can run. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. It's like, what kind of hypothetical were you running there? <laughs> <laughs> wrong all right so he okay yeah, i thought so yeah, I mean, ontario is here like in the middle and if you go left it's manitoba uh, that's what letter kenny is got it good, fish, <laughs> good fishing's in manitoba all <laughs> right that he understands oh um <laughs> do we want to give the uh these gentlemen the floor for a moment um i think no, you we're, still got it. we're still good okay go ahead oh were you gonna talk about earl thomas no, no. I, can, uh, we can. I mean, we can. No, no, not yet. No, Marisa, Marisa has a... All right. All right. Go ahead, Marisa. It's your world, man. All right. It's your world. That's Earl it. Thomas. There was a bunch of texting in the group that I didn't read at all. So I need you guys it's to tell me what the fuck good, happened with this idiot. Such a good story. All right. So from what I hear, <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. He had a fight with his wife, right? And then his brother came to pick him up. They went to an Airbnb, okay. and they were smashing some girls, right? Okay. Now, his, uh, I think she's his wife, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. she found his Snapchat. He left the geolocation on. Ooh. So she located where he was. Rookie move, bro. Yeah. And then, I'm not sure how true this is, but this is what I, this is what I hear. Um, she looked... Like she saw, like it was like a purple, um, purple light. So she looked around for like some purple lighting. She found it. She had already brought his pistol. Uh, her and her homegirls or homeboys or whatever. I think like, it was her and one homegirl. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They crashed into the joint. The <laughs> girl, like one of the like her homegirl, was holding the. Who was it? One of the like, I don't. Go ahead. Somebody else say it. Cause what? Somebody say what? Story. She was oh. holding a knife. And she oh, held, yeah. held the other girl at knife point. Yeah. And then uh, his wife had the gun to Earl Thomas' head. And yeah, Jeez. Earl she, wrestled she, the gun from her. Well, she, <laughs> she, took, out, she took out the yeah. clip, but forgot to. There's there one, one in the chamber. chamber. Yeah, she, she forgot to unload the one in so the chamber. So she would have fired. She would have died. She would have yeah. died. 
that's fucking nuts. Or if some, yeah. or if it had gone off like, oh, oh my god. god. Here, here's the part that was like, whoa. So when the wife busts in the room, bad social. She distance. saw that Earl and his brother were smashing these girls, right, in in a bed. Right. Right. Could y'all ever run no. a chain? No. Okay. With your brother? No. I was like, nah. No, I, no. I couldn't do it with my brother. No. Yeah, that, that's all. I, I mean, like, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe same room, separate sides of the room, but yeah, nah, that's dick's too close. Nah. Dick's too close. Yeah. Can't nah. do it. Well, let me tell you guys a story. Now, Jack. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that everybody. This like, is not okay. a to me. This is not a wild story. It just happens to involve. I watch a lot of live PD. This, <laughs> yeah. This is not a rare occurrence because. Crimes of passion. That's what Earl said. Crimes of passion are like the number one reason for for or one or two reason for murder is crimes number of one. passion. It happens in the the heat of the moment. It's number one. Well, no, domestic but there's violence, stuff like that. domestic violence is different. I'm but, saying it's not premeditated, non premeditated. Yeah, yeah. Non premeditated. Just you're so fucking angry at your significant other. Um, but th- like this shit happens all the time. The only reason this got any news at all is because he's, he's fucking Earl Thomas. Yeah, but, but I mean. That like that's that's kind of his like i get that there's a police side of it and that that's fine that m- probably should end up in the news so that people can you know read about the crimes in their city but i don't think this is this is way too much public publicity off what i think is a very minor thing oh of course it is because there's no sports <laughs> yeah like it, i want to go as far as to say it's a very minor pro- thing though i mean if, if it's an it, all pro safety like and you don't you don't have any other sports on of course we're talking about. Yeah, this is his personal issue that him and his wife are having problems. Like the gun yeah. thing, not that's super the, cool. That's where it takes to another level. She I, held I, a loaded all, gun. She tried to, to hold a not loaded gun to his head. But she and, failed at that. And this is why. I'm sorry, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh, he fuck. turned red as fuck just now. Uh, oh, he, he's having a, he, the, he just had a stroke. <laughs> The filter, the filter turned on just in time. Yeah, moving just on. Just saying, uh, no. It, what was it? Uh, if if everybody's just saying that it's no big deal. Case in point, Steve McNair. Case in point, Chris Henry. I want to hit shit. It's one of those sort of situations where Boy, something that small can turn into something really, 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 really bad. I forgot and about Chris Henry. The oh. fact that like she brought look. Getting cheated on fucking sucks. You get to a point where it is enraging. But I will say, if there's no prenup, you got a pretty good payday coming your way. So just think strategically. Or what? What else happened? I think um, like they they're talking now, and allegedly she bought him a chain, and the chain is of them and the kids. Yeah, he has three kids. I right? wouldn't be surprised if he stuck with her. I know, but like, why are you gonna buy me a chain with me and the kids after you just pointed a gun in my head? With my Cause, money, because he, because <laughs> she feels bad. She don't. I mean, people. I can't tell you. Like, people fight that, who I, love I, each other, and then. Nah, bro, that's toxic over. as fuck. <laughs> no, I mean, here's the you, thing. You, you, gonna, hold, you gonna point a gun at me? All right, like, if you hold it in for too long, you, you, end, go. you end up with guns to your head. If you if you just clear the air. It's much better. So I say, babe, babe, you know, hopefully they get help. So hopefully they you, get help. Yeah. Hopefully they hey, get help. You know, you know, uh, you know, I fucked up. I was really, really angry. I mean, you cheated on me. We got kids. Like I know the gun was overkill, but here's this chain <laughs> <laughs> with me and the kids on it. And uh, yeah, I use it your says account. We love you. I use your account to get it, but I still had to go get it. Nah, she. Pro- I'm sure she has. I'm money. joking. I know she probably has her own money. Independent mm-hmm. women. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to like fuck up and like create a narrative. All right, so yeah, that's how we feel about that. Uh, it's it's a pretty funny, I, I guess, story. Yeah. I mean, but I, I'm not totally surprised. It's funny now that everybody's alive. Yeah, yeah, it would have been hey, very right, unfunny. Right. Like we would not yeah. be having this type of conversation. You, if it was can, a make- find, you can find humor in it. This doesn't make it itself funny. Yeah, yeah. But that's you true. can you can look to find the humor in almost anything, especially when right now everybody's fucking depressed and we're looking for humor in everything. Yeah, I find humor I in everything. I'm not depressed at all. I don't think if so. If I had a power ranking of the depressed members of ASOS, I'd probably have Mauricio number one. You think I'm depressed? 
you're probably playing Warzone all the time, and all it knows what the fuck. I'm you playing know. Warcraft now because my GPU blew up. So the only thing that I, I know that you're depressed if you're fucking playing Warcraft. <laughs> Um, That's a good game. Ryan might be number two just because it's two o'clock and he just woke up. Um, I, was, <laughs> I, needed, I needed sleep, dude. James is going to locking himself in a closet, so he <laughs> might be number three. Well, you think you're the least depressed here. I have drugs. <laughs> Fair enough. Say <laughs> no more. Simply for this. I have lots of them. Say no more. When I start feeling that ugly feeling, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's it's building inside. Oh no! <laughs> All right. Another thing that happened this week was the uh, NFL schedule that uh, dropped. So, um, Ryan, why don't you start with your analysis of what do you think? The, how do you think the Bills are going to do based on your schedule? Uh, the Bills have a pretty easy schedule. Week four might be a little tough. Um, we got we got the um, Raiders. Oh snap! Um, but it's it's Jets, Dolphins, Rams. Who knows? Raiders. Then we got the Titans, which will be tough, and the Chiefs that will be tough. And then Jets, Patriots are a toss up at this point. Seahawks, Cardinals, and then Chargers, Niners, Steelers, Broncos, <coughs> Pats again, and then the Dolphins. We got at least eight wins in there. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of teams in there that sound like they should be good, like the Patriots and the Broncos. But, I mean, the Chargers are trash. The Cardinals are a top. The Chargers are not trash. Their fans. Tyrod Taylor. Their fans suck. Their fans suck. I've I've gone to their games, and they're terrible. They're They're a terrible team. With Flip Rip. And they're gonna well, they they got some pieces. I hate the Chargers, but I mean, I think I, the Bills are a good team. So we're we're starting we're starting from there. The Bills the Bills have built a pretty good team. But like the Jets, the Titans might be tough. The Rams aren't going to be tough. The Dolphins are trash. We get the Jets and the Dolphins twice. The Raiders, who knows if they're going to be decent? Yeah, who knows? We'll see though. The, I mean, the Patriots could be we'll absolute watch the game garbage. Together. The Seahawks are always a toss-up. Like, the only team I'm actually scared of in here is the Chiefs and the Titans. That's it. Sure. I think we can outgun the Niners. I think we have a better secondary. It's just I, – I think our schedule is set up in that we start with shitty teams and we end with shitty teams, and that's always the best way to start and end. It must be nice. <laughs> I mean, you, you, start, you start 2-0 and and then you go into – or 3-0 and and then you go and play the Raiders at home. In in uh, Las Vegas now, I guess. I mean, if you're three and zero, your balls are like this big. So, James, we'll see. what about the Raiders? Um, Raiders. We have four <laughs> prime time games. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, <laughs> cool. The for the first time in the past three years, no, four years, we are not. We don't. We have the least. Well, no, we don't have the most amount of time traveled. Um, nice. Like the amount of miles. I that, was a, say. that was a, a we were three years last in a row. year, right? We, yeah, okay. We, no, three years in a row. We sure. had the most miles. Don't worry, Raiders fans are trying to figure out how the NFL fucked them over with the schedule. They just have to come up with that. <laughs> I can tell you right now. No, they're, they're, they're for, they're for the right. first time for the they're first good. time in history, a team that's on the West, like Pacific uh, time zone, we have the most games ever, which is six in the at the one o'clock spot. So. That kind of sucks. Oh, but, 10 a.m. games? Yeah, but to counteract that, we have the second easiest um, schedule. So You guys didn't see that they rescheduled six-year games to London? You didn't see that? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> and did you just use quotes on schedule, not easiest? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is the schedule something we're trying to figure out? <laughs> it may or may not be a schedule. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we know it's the easiest. We just don't know if it's schedule. It's, t- it's TBD. <laughs> Second easiest, apparently. Allegedly. All right, what about – uh, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, that's it. I said, is that better? Uh, so yeah, it works. Okay. Our, I don't know anything. Is your stadium fully built? Yeah, um, almost. But it is fucking dope, though. Are you, yeah, it's the Death Star, man. Yeah. Are you guys, are you guys going to – so there probably like won't start. be preseason, oh, but allegedly, let's say there is preseason. Are you guys playing? In- oh, I believe so. Damn. Ah, great line. 
Can't say it. Good. What? what? I'm not sure though. Han Solo? Have you seen Rise of Skywalker? No. Nope. I have not. Is that the new one? Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it. It's on my oh, two yeah. watch. Show won't land then. Never mind. Good. Right. Good. Got okay, your audience. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kenny, <laughs> Kenny, you want to go with your Redskins schedule? We're fucked. <laughs> uh, I saw it. And yeah. Oh, uh, look at you trying to be a Raiders fan. Dwayne. Dwayne, 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 Dwayne. I'm not. I'm not. nothing to do with the scheduling. I'm not. Hold on. I'm not blaming the NFL for my schedule. Right. I'm blaming the fact that my team sucks. So I'm looking through the schedule. I'm like, we're not gonna win a lot of games. So. Really? Um, oh wow. Oh wow. Philly, loss. Arizona at Arizona. Probably a loss. Uh, yeah, Cleveland at Cle- Cleveland at Cleveland. Then we go home to Baltimore. Of those four, you might get a win. L.A., yeah. the Rams, That's I don't like that matchup. The Rams New York up. Giants might be a win. but that's I give three them wins. One, yeah, you give them one and one just because you of the Giants. Yeah, we know the Giants. Yeah, we then we got them. Dallas, five. You got the New York Giants again. We played them twice in four weeks. So hopefully we're feeling good, but most likely mm-hmm. we'll go one and All one. Right. You got four. Detroit at Detroit. Don't Five. like that. Toss don't, up. Get, don't give me that. That's a toss Detroit up. Detroit sucks ass. What was the record last year? What was the Redskins record? Not, I don't know. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. They I'm suck. Matt they Stafford, suck. I'll never say a team that Matt Stafford's on sucks. I'll always say that he has an ability to win. Yeah, he does. Cincinnati probably the win. Um, yeah. The win that I'm now. like, I care about. You got six about. wins. All right. Now look into this. Uh, it's nice so bad. Gimmick. At Dallas. <laughs> that, wait, at that could Dallas. be a win. No. At it's Dallas. Basket. Next it's week. one and one for Giants and Cowboys every year. Is the Next average. week at Pittsburgh. Next week Lost. at San Francisco. Lost. Then we have Seattle. Then Lost. we have Carolina. Lost. Then we are at Wait, Carolina. That's a win. We're fucked. You're, you're, you're going to beat Carolina. No, right, now, my, right now, all I want is more than three wins. And that's based on I, I got you guys going seven and nine. I don't. And I'm cool with that. I just, because here's the thing I'm still very, very happy about where the team is headed. I don't need us to make the playoffs this year to be okay with where we're at. I think you that's a good go point. I don't, and I'm not Based looking on... forward to that at all. I, I'm not. There's no prognostication I have at I all saying. I see a dress bet in our future. No, because yeah, how going to bet like no? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be rooting for them. You're going to be rooting against them. No, that don't make no sense. <laughs> the, the dress bet from last year was it's based fun. on the, three, the season that we had prior to. We started off 63 with Alex Smith, and when he went down, and then by the end of the year, we had Mark Sanchez and fucking Josh Johnson and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, hey, all right. Josh Johnson was, did all right. I'll give that kid some credit. I like watching he's him Josh play. Johnson. I so, like watching him play. He's still Josh Johnson. So the, the, the J- fact, JJ, not, the fact not that we had that squad going into the next year, and Case Keenum was like, all right, as long as he can manage the game, we'll be okay. Nothing along those lines were okay last year, and we were trash. I love the new coaching staff. I love our rookie. I think Dwayne Hassan will be better. But under no circumstance can I say that I know the team is a 500 team right now. I just know we're moving in the right direction. It also takes time to build the team and to have a new offense installed and to get everything up and running. So I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm still okay with where the team is headed. And all I need to do is get more than three wins to feel as though we're going in the right direction. And looking at that and schedule, yeah. I'll feel very good if we get more than three wins. Out of I think if you guys have three wins going into Thanksgiving, you guys are in good shape. If we're, se- if we're seven and nine with that schedule and based on what I think those teams will do, then fuck yeah, I'm Super Bowl or bust three years from now. Like, that's just where my head is. Like, I mean, if we can you'd, pull that you'd off have to. That, you'd have to because then you gotta, you got to do it before Dwayne Haskins – He's done with his rookie contract, as we know. If Dwayne, but it, maybe because Dwayne Haskins, unless he comes out and does some Patrick Mahomes type shit, there's a there's a drop off. You got the Patrick Mahomes money, you got the Aaron Rodgers money, you got the Lamar Jackson when he gets paid money. Oof. Dwayne Haskins right now does not look as far as trajectory goes. It doesn't show as that he's going to have the same trajectory as those guys. So yeah. I don't think we're looking at having to pay him an ungodly amount of money. But shit, I just read an article saying that we're going to try to go get Aaron Rodgers next year. Which I'm like, fuck that. But it's – we got a lot of cap space, so I don't really care. But it's oh, – Would that be a bad thing, though? I want Dwayne Hassel to be good. That's just where I'm at. I, I'd like for him to be a good player. And if there's anybody just based on from a personal standpoint that I want to okay. see – Okay, I got a question Dwayne for you. Dwayne to win is Alex Smith. I got a question for you. Are you do, you – do you feel like it is a good situation to choose the player over the organization? 
Like, are I'll you never. are you choosing? So, well, it, it you have a chance to get I, I Actually, it depends on the player to me. Okay. It depends on the player. Like, if I if there's a huh? certain, usually you would say the organization as a whole. But um, even with that, if I see a if I see a player in an organization, it's the same thing I felt about when I was talking about Trent Williams and Ryan Kerrigan. What's the best interest for those players last year to get them the fuck out of Washington? Because I like those players. So I will look for a player first over an organization if I think the organization has no chance of treating him right. But as of right now, I think that I want to see Dwayne Haskins do good. But if he doesn't, no, toss him. Like, that's the, the end of the day. It is what it is. He hasn't built that stock with me yet. I like him a lot. Yeah, I only have one player ever that I would choose over the organization they play for, and that's just messy. Like, no, everybody no. else. That, that's – it's a different sport. I know. But, like, anybody else in football, like, shit, we had Khalil Mack, man. I love that guy. But He had a lot of sacks sense. after you guys, guys uh, I'm a rescue. You know what? Which means it made sense no to make one. that trade. You know what and breaks my heart? Colt McCoy name? is Max, a Max giant. Crosby had more sack, or the same amount of sacks as Khalil Mack last year. Uh, and the Colt, Bears Colt, Colt, Mc, Colt McCoy sex. is a giant. Same amount of sacks, yeah. Here's the uh, way I said sex. Here's, here's the way I'll answer it. In New England, in New England, <laughs> I'll always tr- in New England, I'll always trust the organization to make the right call. So I'll usually side on the organization side more than I side on the player side. Even they don't that, always make the right call. They almost how many Super Bowls did they win? Um, they are almost. At they're the making end, a lot some of the right players course. that that fell out there. Even with the talent of the players, they they've lost to Richard Seymour, still won a Super Bowl. They've lost Ty Law and still won a Super Bowl. They lost Rodney Harrison. It's still won a Super Bowl. Wait, 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 wait. Still wait, won a Super Bowl. Wait, Mike Vrabel still we're won a Super Bowl. About, no, no, we're on, we're on a different plane, like as we were talking about before. <clears throat> you said you always trust the Patriots organization to make the right decisions. To make the decisions in for yeah, to make the best decision they need to make for the organization. Okay. All right. So yeah, no, I will one hundred percent agree with that. Yeah, it was diff. Like I was thinking, what you're saying something different. No, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, like they don't saying. fuck up. Like, they do. Everybody can fuck up. But I'm saying that usually right. what they do is they make their – if it comes down to a player, they're not paying you for what you've done. They're paying you for what it is they think you're capable of doing. And then once you get to be too much, it's gone because it doesn't work for the organization, which yes. I understand that. But if it's one thing if you have a proven track record. With the Washington Redskins, I cannot under any circumstances trust the organization to make the right call. So usually I'm going to be on the side of the players. Because at least with the players, they're the ones that are going out there sacrificing. And a lot of those guys are sacrificing. You can tell they're putting forth maximum effort. And if they're doing that, then I like them and I want what's best for them. Hopefully it's in the burgundy and gold. But if the burgundy and gold fuck it up, same way if Bruce Allen was still here and if uh, fucking Jay Gruden was still here, I'd be wishing Ryan Kerrigan was not on this team anymore. I, All right, I'm, so I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate, right? We're so what's still, the difference we're still from playing, Patriots players? paying Bobby Bonilla. I just want to throw that out there. Still paying him. What's the difference for Patriots players? The ones they that win. are going out there, shit, you can say last year, the ones that went out there, like, put their bodies on the line, like, worked hard, like you said about the Skins players, and then what? You're on the side of them or the Patriots? No, if, because if there's, two uh, thi- there's two things that are different. Number one, they usually, those Patriots players got their Super Bowl, they got their wins, they got their money most likely too, outside mm-hmm. of most of the times, the Patriots at least paid you once. They usually won't do it a second time, but they'll pay you once. Um, the uh, When it comes down to that, I look at the Patriots, I'm like, I don't feel bad for those guys as much because they won. You got something. There was a return on investment. You came, you sacrificed, you won. Now go get your payday somewhere else if you want to go do it. Mm-hmm. But that's it. That's where the line cuts off as far as the Patriots go. With the Redskins, it's, it's you sacrifice – You've got fans that fucking hate the team and aren't showing up. I feel for the players. You didn't get anything other than hopefully pay. And at the end of the day, if you want to go win, go off and do that. It's the same thing I feel about Trent Williams. I hope Trent Williams wins the Super Bowl in San Francisco because I know the rest no, of them won't me win too. One No, never. Not, not in San Francisco. Fuck that. You're not in Oakland anymore. Shut up. I don't so, care. It don't like matter. 750 miles it away doesn't now. doesn't matter. I don't give a shit. Fuck Marshawn's going to Seattle, uh, right? Yeah. 
Dude, Marshawn, Marshawn, Marshawn was on uh, Westworld, and then he died the last episode. Spoiler oh, alert. god that damn it! I haven't even seen it yet! Oh, well, that's your fault. You haven't even seen the second season, so fuck you. I, I have now. I just don't... Here's the thing. I just don't understand when you understand and you know that no one, that other than those 50 people, which probably is most of us just clicking on the YouTube link, you basically just spoiled that for us, which makes yeah. you an asshole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't really care, honestly. I know. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm going to figure out something you care about. Depressed. Yeah, I've, I've already, uh, the only thing I care about is Westworld, and I've already finished watching it because I watch it and you guys nah, don't. So nah, you. there's, there's going to be something else that you care about, and I'm going to ruin it for you. Whatever, dude. Uh, Eagle, no, I'm never going to watch Westworld. How dare you? Eagle schedule, can I talk about that? Would you guys mm. talk? Whatever, no, <laughs> we, don't, we don't care. Um, I think it's uh, the first half, it's besides... Um, Besides having to play 49ers and then the Cowboys and maybe the Giants, I think it's pretty good. I do like that we have a, a bye week right at the week nine, which is right in the middle of the season. Uh, the second half, though, besides the Browns and maybe the Cardinals, I think we're fucked. Because we got a uh, star of win New York, then Browns, then the Seahawks and Seattle, then the Packers, Saints, Cardinals a little break, and then to finish off with the Cowboys and the Eagles. I mean the Eagles and the yeah, Redskins again to finish out the season. With it, with the uh, divisional games, it's usually one and one. I, I never know when we're going to be the Cowboys and where they're going to beat us. Same thing with the Redskins. Same thing with New York. Um, so, basic enough what Kidino is saying that your schedule is tough. That obviously benefits us, but I don't know how the Cowboys are going to do. I don't know how New York's going to do. And fuck, I hope that we can at least you know have go over 500 if we can their schedule being tough doesn't benefit you because you play the same people i mean they play tougher people kind of you just named the player you just named the teams that we play too okay i see what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> but the Eagles are, oh, right. i guess Eagles, the way that the schedule is set up right Eagles are a better <laughs> that's team. what i meant yeah, that's what I meant. Eagles are yeah. a better team. They're still second in the division. Dallas is on top. Outside of that, um, that's Dallas is most. dumb. Dallas is on top. But also, anybody that's chalking up Arizona as a win when you got Colin Murray's arm in fucking DeAndre Hopkins is who he's throwing to now. I don't know about you. I ain't, I ain't fucking. Are you gonna not, chug on that I'm one, you think? Under no circumstances chalking that up. It, it depends. It depends who your secondary is, really. Well, D line to me, or D line. It'll it a hundred percent be D line, which is yeah. where I. That's the thing. I think the Redskins, the Redskins. The, the you have a Redskins, shot because you have a good D-line. The, and the weird thing with the Redskins is that no one has any idea what we're going to look like on defense especially because we've been playing a 3-4 defense with the incorrect personnel for years now. We're moving to a 4-3 where you're going to have dudes that got their hands in the dirt. Ryan Kerrigan being able to put his hands in the dirt and not have to stand up as outside linebacker playing over tight ends and stuff. I – Dude, I don't know. If we can get pressure on the quarterback and start fucking hitting some people, if we could just lay a finger on Carson Wentz, we know his ass is going to fold over. So they have a matter, they have a they have a backup now. I'm just saying, all bets are off the New England Patriots way. All or even if you look at what the Pittsburgh Steelers did for years until fairly recently, you get your hands on the quarterback, all bets are off. Yep, you can win with defense for sure. Yep. I mean, that's what the Niners did all last year. For I was going to bring an Al Davis quote in there. but okay. Good nope. good portion nope. of last year. The, that was my joke that I was going to make earlier. Poking the bear. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're moving on. <laughs> Before that happens. Uh, so, apparently, another person got hacked or whatever. Uh, Gianni. Gianni? Is that his name? Giannis. 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 At the Kumpo. Try his last name. At the Kumpo. At the Kumpo? Okay, so his hey! name is the, the Greek. Well, dude, he's Aztecan. All their names down there look like that, dude. <laughs> I'm going to watch that today. I've never seen Apocalypto all the way Oh, it's so good. It's, oh, it's, oh, it's, so, it's so, so good. bad. Oh, my God. You think it's I was bad? I Mel Gibson. There's n <laughs> it's Passion of the Christ set in South, South Mexico. <laughs> That's Bro, not so a good. good. I hated Passion of the Crack. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, I got dragged to the dumb. movie theater. I did family. too. They didn't realize I was Jewish. You know, I was just sitting there <laughs> laughing <laughs> the whole time. Who dragged you to the movie theater for Passion of the Christ? Huh? This were they not... trying to get you? Were they trying to uh, <laughs> wash the Jew off of you? Yeah, I don't know. They did, I don't think they knew. And I was just sitting there like, guys, this one really doesn't go off well with me. I don't, I don't they know don't about you. Don't huh? They don't ring off in the theater for you? No, I, I mean, Braveheart is 
my my favorite murdering of somebody story. Is- they walked Ryan out of the movie theater and said, "You got something to say? <laughs> you got a you, maybe an apology, sir?" <laughs> What's it, uh, what's, uh, uh, what's his Boris name? What's his name? Sasha. Uh, Barry Cohen. Yeah, uh, I think he calls Mel Gibson the uh, Jewish warrior. <laughs> That's his nickname for him because of the dumb shit that he said back in the day. He so what happened really to Gianni's? Like the oh, so his account got hacked, right? And Ugh. whoever the hacker was was terrible. He Don't did, hack me. He had so much potential. He had the yeah. world at his fingertips, and he just dropped the ball. What he was he at least funny or anything? No. No, just hateful. Just yeah. hateful shit for the sake of saying hateful shit. Like, it wasn't, there was no, Bro. like, if you got that kind of opportunity, and you're going to do it, which you shouldn't do. But if you're going to do it, at least be funny about it, or at least yeah. try to be, like, there'd be one thing, if somebody, if somebody hacks into an account and, like, maybe sends, a, just keeps access for a while and sends off, like, a little shade here and there, maybe you get somewhere. But the dude just went, like, everybody knew off the bat, we're not, so, this is not Giannis talking. Yeah, I mean, I was I was really – and while I was reading it, and I don't know if this is true, but it seemed like English might have been a second language because it just wasn't – there wasn't a lot of substance. I could tell you what – Like it might have been somebody – somebody was just copy-pasting from a different – One language. tweet said, F, F Le, like LeBron, uh, he tried to hire a hitman on me. It's, it's like – <laughs> It's ridiculous. You <laughs> just laughed. Um, yeah, I mean, it's – You literally it's just so laughed stupid. at that. It's just so Slap stupid. yourself. Yeah. It's and then stupid. another one was F. Like Chris that. Middleton. F. Chris Middleton. Uh, I want to play with some actual shooters. And then the one after that was rest in piss, uh, Kobe. Kobe. Yeah, uh, that one sucked. But who says then, that? Yeah. And I've then, never heard anybody say that. Rest in piss. Rest in piss kind of good. The, like the, like only, the only one really? that I was like, well, the only one I was, I was like, oh, all right, this is, this is like, Something that you should tweet if you're going to hack somebody, which you shouldn't hack somebody, was uh, he tweeted, I'm going to the Warriors. I was like, all right, cool. Funny. Everybody thinks he's going anyway. Just tweeted. The world lights up on fire. Whatever. What a and waste then, of opportunity. And then he tweeted, the Bucks, which is his team, is a racist team, and they call me a nigger slave if I don't score 60 points a game. I was like, come on. Oh, bro. I didn't see that one. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that was like, uh, what the fuck? Not funny. Not funny. Boo you, sir. Or ma'am, but probably sir. Boo you. It's a dude. It definitely is. Yeah. That, well, that, I'm glad we talked about that. The race? That sucks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. That yeah, guy doesn't deserve our that fucking suck. time. That sucks. Jason Whitlock. Ah, I will, as the resident white person, I will give you to the floor. I want to hear what you got to say. Uh, I don't. So I see Jason Whitlock on Fox News way too much to trust his opinion. The only the only exception to that rule is my boy Jason Nichols, who I really respect his opinion. My old professor. He comes on and he he gives he gives good opinions, even if I don't agree with them all the time. I usually do. Um, Jason Whitlock to me is, um, how do I say this without getting myself in trouble? That's why I wanted you to go first. Um, I feel like his opinions are largely based, uh, outside of reality. Um, and I think he kind of, he's a, he's a caterer, if that makes sense. Uh, he caters. He likes eat, he likes to eat catering. Um, he's a big boy, but you know, some of us are. Big boy. Um, Big boy, big boy. I, I, fe- I feel like I, f- I feel like he gave himself a I don't know when this was because I haven't been a fan of him, but I think he gave himself this persona um, where he's a little Fox Newsy uh, a while ago in all of his opinions, yeah, even when the facts clearly state something different. And I don't think he's really swayed from that. And I think that that controversy is what gets him airtime, but uh, on the flip side of that, I I think what he's doing is detrimental to uh, us. Yeah, black people in general. So that's that's my take. I I I don't like the man. It's it's him and then Skip Bayless. And I hate them both. I kind of like Skip. Right. Yeah, so? Skip, is, Skip is all right. Now it just his voice irritates me. Uh, all right, I understand that, but yeah, he's nowhere in the same class as Jason. 
no, no, no. That's why Whitlock is still first. I don't hate a lot of people. So if you're on my list, you're. I fucking hate you, dude. I hate me too. <laughs> so what happened with Jason Whitlock then? I will. I will leave y'all the floor. Thank you, dude. I'm so, listening. Um, yeah. So there was a incident that happened back in February, which I'm sure everybody's uh, aware of. No, I'll say uh, it. Huh? Say it. Say it. Yeah, Armad Arbery. I think it's how you mm-hmm. pronounce his name, mm-hmm. was a uh, gentleman who uh, back in February was uh, shot and killed as he was jogging down a street in Georgia. Yep. Um, He's 25. Uh, a father and a son pulled up with a, in a pickup truck. The dad was in the back with a handgun. The son had a shotgun. It was caught on video that just got released a few days ago. Um, uh-huh. On the video, it kind of goes in and out. The uh, the Armad goes tries to go around the truck. There's uh, some yelling that happens. Um, then they're struggling over the gun. You hear two or three shots. It's kind of hard in the video. I think I think in the video that I saw there was two, but I heard there's a video of three. Um, and then you see him stumble over with blood all over his abdomen. It's a fucking snuff film, and he it's he, terrible. He falls, he falls over. It's really bit of bad. But um, the dude didn't get the the father and son had no charges pressed against them until the video just got released and they got picked up yesterday day before um yeah i I saw it a couple days ago but uh it's been making the rounds of social media really really a a lot and um everybody sort of had their take on it i know i posted about it um lebron james also posted about it i want to pull up lebron's actual tweet um so lebron is is lebron has been very much on the front lines at least speaking about things that have happened um it's been one of those things where you can also see a lot of people have been trying to compare him and mj especially with the last dance that's happened where michael jordan for the most part stayed out of politics or any social activism even though he did do some things it just wasn't and he got he got a lot of flack for it too he did and a lot of people compare and say lebron should maybe take more out of michael's book or whatever but it was past it's just something that's been making the rounds but lebron came out and said um we're literally hunted Every day, every time we step foot outside the comfort of our homes. Can't even go for a damn jog, man. Like, what the fuck, man, are you kidding me? No, man, for real, are you kidding me? I'm sorry, Ahmad, rest in peace. And my praise and blessings sent to the family. I sent to heavens above to your family. Hashtag stay woke. Hashtag profile because we are simply black. Um, LeBron posted that. It caused a bit of a stir um, in the sense of there were people that, like me, I saw it. And at least off off the bat, when I saw it, I kind of – I understood where LeBron was coming from on it. Like, I agreed for the most part with what he was saying. But uh, Jason Whitlock, as we are talking about, he had his own take on it. Um, Jason Whitlock basically told – I want to pull up Jason's actual text, too. Or, I want to tell you, but I don't want to – I don't want to be like I'm speaking – like, I don't want to be Jason Whitlock in this situation. I am just being like – so Jason Whitlock says, LeBron is the Pied Piper – for a lot of athletes. If the goal is to promote justice for Ahmad Arbery, LeBron's rhetoric doesn't promote justice. It promotes emotion and fear, the enemies of justice. We continue to promote emotion or fear. We can seek justice. There was another thing that he had written, though. I got it. I'm about to say it. You ready? I got it. Yep. He said, this isn't helpful. It's Twitter, tro- it's Twitter trolling. It's using this man's strategy to build a brand as more outspoken than Michael Jordan. There are all kinds of ways to draw attention to this tragedy. Suggesting that we are hunted every day, every time is just shit stirring. Like, bruh. So here's here's what it comes down to. Wait, 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 my bad, I forgot. Jason Willock, if you ever see this, probably won't, but if you do, I'm offering you the fade. Go ahead, continue. The The topic is one that I think a lot of people like myself and like James are fucking sick and tired of having to see videos about or to talk about or to see happen at all. Um, but it's, I think Jason, and he, he admitted it the next, the following day on his show. Jason admits that he feels as though he made a mistake when he went to the Michael Jordan co- comparison in the sense of he thinks that um, LeBron was being hyperbolic when he talks about black people being hunted every day. Um, and I guess what, is, what, what Jason was trying to say was that if that's the rhetoric that's used, it becomes polarizing 
And after it becomes polarizing, it's hard for the other side to take anything seriously or to dismiss or to argue when there should be people coming together on this particular thing. Now, and he says that his rhetoric as far as the Michael Jordan thing did the same thing, which was inflammatory and got away from this, from this point. I will admit this. I'm not a fan of Jason Whitlock. I'm not going to go as far as other people to call him a coon or Uncle Tom or any of this other bullshit. I will say that Jason Whitlock, for the most part, is as guilty as anybody as far as using anything to get across whatever platform or agenda that he wants to. And he has this narrative built into his head that I strongly disagree with. As a black man in America, no, I don't feel as though every day I'm being literally hunted down in the streets for anything. But I think what you're doing is if that's the part that you hang on to, you're missing the entire point. We're angry. There's rage to be had. And we're upset. And people say things when they are upset. And you shouldn't be looking to mince words when it comes to people being upset and correcting them on what it is that they need to say as much as understanding why they're upset and how it is you need to, to meet them somewhere. And that gives people the, the means to say, oh, if Jason says it, then I agree with him. That's, my, thing, that's the, my biggest problem with what he said. The wow. thing with Whitlock is that there is no, I don't understand how any of this can be polarizing. If you're caught up in a situation where you're looking at whether or not he was being, he went overboard with a particular statement in his tweet, instead of the overall point, I don't want to argue with you. I don't want you on my side. I don't need anything to reach across to have a conversation with you. You're already lost. You have made it a point to completely disregard the issue at hand. It's the same thing that Jason Whitlock was on the same side when it came to the Colin Kaepernick thing. They never talk about why it is we're upset. They never talk about what it is that's actually going on and what's happening. What they do is they find some way to some technicality bullshit to disregard everything you're saying. Because you went too far with something, or you, you're speaking too angrily. That notion of the angry black man and what it is that it means to, once you're the angry black man, no one gives a fuck about what it is you're saying anymore. Even though we have every fucking right to be angry. I remember years ago, this was like 10, 15 years ago, I was talking to an older gentleman when I worked at the bookstore. And I was talking about getting contacts and getting LASIK eye surgery. And the guy talked to me and he said, man, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest you do that. And I said, well, what do you mean? He's like, you're a bigger guy. You're black. You got a beard. He's like, you already kind of come across and you got to look at the way America looks at you. You're already the angry black guy and you're already menacing to them. And I'm like, but I'm not. I'm not at all. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, it doesn't matter. When you wear the glasses and you carry yourself a certain way, at least you'll be able to walk a little bit better to have people. And it's, the thing is, I took what he was saying, I understood it. And I actually went and applied some of the shit just out of fear of wanting to be heard. And it's the thing, I can't, I can't have anybody hear what it is I want to say about the fact that if I get pulled over by the police, it's already inherent because of inherent racism that they think I'm more violent or more dangerous than a white counterpart. It's just how it is. And the fact that you have people that can't even get to that point where we can acknowledge that and have a conversation about that, it's, no, he said that we're being hunted every day. It's the same thing, the Colin Kaepernick thing. Oh, he's kneeling, he fucking hates America, he hates our flag, he hates this, that, and the other. And you completely gloss over the fact that you got black men being killed by police or being hunted by fathers and sons who assume that he was robbing someone and then is able to do a citizen's arrest when they're on the back of a fucking pickup truck and shoot a man dead when he's jogging and I'm not allowed to be upset or to be angry about it or say that we should at least have a conversation about it. It's fucking horseshit. And don't tell me that I need to check my language or you check this that, and the other. No. If you want to come to me and talk about the reason that I'm upset or I'm angry, you need to have hand out and talk to me about the shit. It's the same way I would never go and tell a rape victim how it is they need to act when they've been raped. I have no fucking idea. I've never been raped. I'm not going to speak on that part. Same way you got motherfuckers like Jason Whitlock, where you have a lot of other people that are not from my background, that have not the slightest fucking idea what it's like 
to know when the blue and red lights are behind you. Rick Buecher. Scared. Or to know that when I live down in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and I'm driving down the street at 2 o'clock in the morning, and the dude in the pickup truck pulls next to me with a don't tread on me flag and a Confederate flag, and looks at me, and you can see the rage and the anger in his face when I'm playing my fucking hip-hop from my goddamn car. And I got to worry about the fact that he hasn't stopped following me for a few months. The fact that when I want to go do something in Charlottesville, I got to worry about it. I got to worry about where it is I'm alone some places or if I'm in a dirt road in fucking South Carolina, I got to worry about something. You have no fucking idea what that's like. And for you to say that I need to act a certain way for you to listen to me, fuck you. There's not, there, I'm not reaching across to get you to understand me anymore. You've already shown that you have no ear to hear me unless I come to you the way you want me to. Yeah, and it's that's horseshit. Like that part. It's absolute horseshit. And wow. Jason Whitlock has stayed on this particular stance on this forever. We need to make ourselves more presentable to white people to get them to understand us and to take us. I'm, I'm off that shit. It's the same thing that people forget why Martin Luther King had that nonviolence ideal. It wasn't that he didn't believe in punching the motherfucker in the face if they did something. It was because he knew if the cameras were rolling, when they were hosing people down and sicking dogs on them, it might get people from outside of America to understand and to look and to see at how we're being victimized. That's what the goal was, to go to the UN to ask for support. That was the goal. That's the only reason we do it, is for people to look and to say, hey, we need help. And if the shit ain't still happening when you got the Eric Garners, and you've got guys like Armand, Ar 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 when you got this sort of situation happening, nobody's going to listen to us. It. It's horseshit. So don't, you're going to get upset with somebody for taking out their frustration online because they should have said it a certain way. You've completely lost out on the argument at that point. You're done. Sheesh, man. Full agreement. Full yeah, agreement. I don't think there's one word that you said that I could agree more with. And, and that's, why, that's why you got a lawyer on retainer there. Wait, you know? does uh, Jason Wigglock have kids? I don't even know. I was, I was like, that. I was like, did he have to have that convo with them about like, like what age? Like, if you have an interaction with a cop, how to act? But see, that's the thing. This is the thing that I don't is that even when he was talking to Marcellus Wiley and everything about it, and they were like, we know LeBron behind his gates and everything at his house. Don't necessarily have to worry about the same things that I they do. They spray painted shit on his house. Like, I get that. Here? Here's the thing. I'm not. I'm not even agreeing with that aspect. Of it. What I'm saying is that even if you follow that train of logic, then what you're telling me is that the black man in America, I can't be safe until I reach X amount of success. He doesn't X have amount kids. Of fame, X amount of money in order to then be on a stratosphere in which I don't get fucked with because I'm famous enough that a cop understands that if he shoots me or if the man understands, it's a father or son that accuses me or thinks that I'm robbing me, shoots me, I don't have to worry about it. The, if I'm famous, they have to worry about there being ramifications. Trust me, those two guys would not be in jail right now if the video didn't come out. They wouldn't. Yeah, I know, because they weren't. Right. And right. What, what was it, uh, Cabo Cephalosha? The shit that happened to him in New York? What was like, that? It was, um, he was outside of a hotel, and then an off-duty police oh, officer yeah. came in, that. like, wrestled to the ground, like, fucked him up. Like, I think broke his leg. Mm. Where he missed, he missed, like, part of the, part of the season. I, I, I remember some of that. I don't remember the full story, though. There's so much shit, man. But it's just, what's the, uh, who's the NBA or former NBA player that just got arrested yesterday? Um, or, uh, Shannon Brown. Shannon Brown. He's, so, that Shannon fuck. Brown has a house in Atlanta that I guess they're working on or whatever, but he had a for sale sign in front of the house. A white couple or a couple, oh, yeah. I guess they're white. They came, they opened up the gate. They said it was unlocked. So they opened up the gate. They were looking for the house and then they, they enter the home. As they enter the home, there's some sort of communication they have back and forth. Uh, yeah, Shannon, he says, what the fuck? Are you serious? He goes and grabs a rifle and shoots five or six times in the general direction. They up and run off. Four hours later, Four hours after it happened, they call the police. That same night, he's in handcuffs, charged with aggravated assault. What the you had fuck? Two people, 
chased down a guy, said that they was for a citizen's arrest, and were free for two months. Two months. For murder. No charges, nothing. Until we all got to see the video. Yep. And, and that, gonna, to me, is ridiculous. They're going to go right. away for a long, long time now. Maybe. Yeah. Nah, they won't. I was like, I've seen that before. Because yeah, here's the thing that people, when people talk about the fact that, like, well, if you look at the statistics, there's a lot of white people that get shot by cops, so there's a lot of white people that get shot, too. Here's the difference. Usually when a white guy kills a black guy, that motherfucker ain't in jail, or he gets off, or he's doing whatever. Show nothing for black dude. Does anything along those lines of getting a white person or anything? They're locked up. Only time it didn't happen was O.J. Simpson. We see how they fucking take care of him. They arrested his ass for stealing his own shit back. Yep. <laughs> and then they locked him up. Hey, what you got there, Mauricio? It's just CBD, I promise you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to wrap this up, guys, uh, Ryan, you want to give me your final thoughts? Um, yeah, I... That was emotionally charged. Um, loading. <laughs> loading. Um, <laughs> look, um, I'm, a, I'm a proponent of everybody. Um, and like I said earlier in the podcast, you can say whatever you want. You just got to deal with the consequences. Um, but you should be able to say whatever you want. That's what's beautiful in this country. And I... I don't think that you should have to say things a certain way or you shouldn't have to, you know, have a certain dialect in order to get your message across to somebody else. And if you have to do that, that means the person that you're reaching out to or the person that's reading or listening to it, um, just does, they're not smart enough or they don't have the capacity or willing to understand what you're saying. Cause if you're even half smart, you can understand what somebody's saying when they say it to you. You can f feel the emotion or you can feel their meaning behind it. And that shit, it just pisses me off when it becomes su such an inflamed situation just based off words. Like if anybody had a real conversation, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of things could get resolved amongst certain communities. But then there's a lot of people that just don't want to listen. So fuck those people. Yeah. Um, also, uh, UFC's back on tonight. I hope people don't catch the COVID, and I hope there are some good fights because if they're going to go off and do it and risk themselves and family members and stuff, I hope they put on a good fucking show. So, Jamo, final thoughts? Um, I actually had to have this convo with uh, my fiance earlier this week. We were talking about um, the whole situation. Um, and I've been trying to prepare her for like life here with me and when we have kids because she wants kids and I want kids too but this week I was really struggling with the fact that I would be bringing someone in the world that will be looked at differently right um and it's kind of like if you if you have kids you you get them as a baby, you raise them, you, you put them, like you dress them, you feed them, you teach them, and then each day you send them off to school, to college, to like on their own. You have no idea, like that, like the, the next time you see them could be the last time, just not from all the regular shit that people have to deal with, but something extra. And then it's like, all right, do, do I want to, it's struggling to figure out if I want to bring kids in the world because of that, but I do because I'm proud of who I am. You yeah, see, have, it's, have it's, 40 kids, please. Repopulate. No, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's not only that, but it's a lot of shit. So. I get it. That sucks. Yeah. Man. I'm sorry. That, that was my final thoughts. God, your fucking babies are going to be cute as fuck, huh? Yeah. So half black, half Mexican babies. I just want them to live, man. We yeah. just want to live. Right. That's it. I, I don't care if they're ugly as fuck, as long as we live. <laughs> just being honest with you. Nah, I get it. You'll be Same. athletic as shit, too, huh? Yeah, as long yeah. as they live. Hey, they're well, really good at soccer. 
or uh, the NFL, one of them. <laughs> or MLB. No, no NFL. MLB. No, I've had too many concussions. I've broken too many bones. My Fair kids enough. are not playing football. Soccer, though. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is also pronounced football. So. Yeah. Oh, what if you... is responsible for more concussions than any other sport? Is it really? I mean, really? I mean is that is that per person or it's because of the heading when they're young? Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh yeah, yeah. They hey, James, his... what if your kid wants to decide? Like he grows up, makes it into the as a pro, and he decides to play for Mexico. <laughs> what if your 46 year old daughter? <laughs> That is still hey, one of the funniest conversations hey, you've so ever had. Back. <laughs> Look, man, I don't all remember it. So fucking... All sorts of sports. All sorts of sports. Bruh. This is your right. fucking fault for putting me in front of a mic when I'm hammered and fucking no, almost. You were like, yeah, let's do pod, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. Was that birthday pod? Yes. I think so, yeah. And he was like, it's all good. right, guys. All right, guys, I'm out. I'm about to go get fucked up. <laughs> And he just and left it, in the middle right. of it. I was like, man, we didn't even, like, say, uh, say what what's your guy. final thoughts. What okay, what's your final thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Uh, Kitty, final thoughts? Um, I wasn't going to go here with this one, but um, I had, when I was married, me and my ex had that conversation about mm-hmm. whether or not to have, it was after what had just happened in Ferguson. And I remember the Eric Garner thing is what really took me over the top. But I'll never forget, my ex-wife was white, and she cried. I mean, weepingly, scared cried about what it would be like to bring kids into it. Mm -hmm. And I felt the sense of, no, I'm going to teach them the same things that I've been taught, and I'm not going to have anybody make me afraid to exist. But I can understand the conversation, same way that she would cry. I remember I had a brake light out of my Jeep once. And she would not allow me to go to AutoZone to get it done. We had to go into her car to go get the brake light and put it mm-hmm. in. She did not want me getting pulled over. Oh, she loved me. Um, so I get it. I'm telling you, you'll, you'll come to where you need to be, but there's under no circumstance you would be having to have that conversation in the first place. Well, um, the, the biggest difference is, like, your ex-wife was raised here. Like... She's coming from like a whole not it. culture. She has no idea. And it's the process of like me learning Spanish and like learning some of the stuff that she My goes, mom's still like, learning. My yeah, mom's Jamaican. Like, She's still learning. It's, it's, t- it's also me trying to explain to her like, all right, this is going to happen. And then figure it out. like for her. Uh, She'll see it. But the thing is, like, you, yeah. you, you want you don't want it to be the situation where, all right, this happened for the first time, but now I'm gone. Yeah, I mean, it, it's I feel like it's tough to explain to people, and that's that's well, the biggest problem. Well, she, 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 she saw it once, and I will say this. it was it was in Mexico. She saw it once, and it really tore her up, like, cause someone someone was um, prejudiced or racist towards me. And like I was explaining the situation to her, like trying to be like, all right, I'm not gonna go crazy about it. Like the person who was that way towards me had no idea. So I was explaining the shit to him, like, hey, you can't do this because this is how it looks. And then I explained to my fiance, and then woo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's uh. it's it's tough. I'm I'm I mean, I'm sure it is. I mean, I grew up I'm, I was the minority at all of my schools. So this, this is, it's never been like weird for me to have like, you know, to understand what people go through because I've been around it my whole life. I've never personally gone through it, but I've seen it and I've mm-hmm. been with people and I've cared about a whole lot of people that have gone through it. But there's just so many people who are so isolated and so mentally isolated that they just, they, that's it. They that's- don't, they don't see it or they don't have anybody to see care it. about no, it's, well, it's, and it's because they don't care about anybody who cares about it. It's like, if you don't have any gay friends, then yep. you don't care about stuff that affects gay people. Like you don't care that they can't go get a wedding cake. You don't care that they can't go get married because it doesn't affect you because you don't care about anybody who it affects. And once, that, w- once that kind of thing comes into your life, it's completely altering. And that's, that's, that's the hugest problem right now. That's the people, big, 
It's me sucked. and James talked on the phone earlier today, and um, it was that's the biggest thing behind it's, our backs. Yeah, I talked to you behind everybody else. Um, <laughs> the the just I, me. <laughs> there's a reason that usually in cities and on the coast you have people that are more liberal and people that talk about these things more is because. In your daily interactions, you run into and you make friendships and you care about people that don't look like you. When you're in those places where you don't have people that walk from a lot of different ways of life, you can't understand or how to bridge that sympathy to that level that you would when you give a shit. It's yeah. the same thing that when you were talking about Julia not knowing, but when she saw it, it was directly involving you. It's one thing to hear about it, but once you have a vested interest yep. in someone else is mm -hmm. when you start to see it. My ex-wife, she might have ran around black people. That's one thing. She might have dated a black guy. That's one thing. But, to, uh, but knowing her upbringing and who it is that she was around and the inherent racism that was around when she was growing up, it didn't really click until she got to really be around in the love and to appreciate and to be with someone it was different and yeah. she could understand when I'm saying it because she's gotten a reason to question my honesty and my sincerity with and she sees how it is that I rock with it so when you have that it allows you to put on somebody else's shoes just a little bit easier that's why most of the time I don't even fault people for having all these preconceived notions on shit because ignorance is not necessarily a negative thing it has a lot of negative connotations Willful ignorance is a negative thing. Yeah. If you're going out of mm. your way to not learn, that's a bad thing. But if mm. you haven't learned something yet, all it is is an opportunity to teach somebody or to yeah. learn. If you if you if you if your parents are racist while you're growing up and you were a bit racist as a child, and that's that's okay with me. If you're a I racist think... after you can make your own choices and after you've been out in the world and you can make your own conscious decisions, that's your fault. Another uh, example I think about is in Remember the Titans. You remember when Sunshine took Petey and them to oh, the yeah, restaurant? That shit fucking pissed me off. And Even when, when I saw that. yeah, and this this took place in Virginia too, which is funny, but not funny. But then uh, uh, when they got back outside, they were like, uh, Sunshine was like, "Hey, I didn't know." And Petey looked at him and was like, "You didn't want to know." <laughs> Well, he was also from California. Want to know. In in Sunshine's defense, he was from California, and in but California, I told you they don't. They don't. I uh, told yeah. you <laughs> multiple I mean, times, and then we went in there, and then I was like, "It's one thing to hear about it. It's one. Th it's a totally different thing to feel it." They like, don't like it in there, man. Yeah, but they don't like it in there, man. What, I, what I think a lot of people got to realize is that you're not going to. There's not. There's there's a difference between you have to have sympathy. You're not. There is almost zero chance in hell the majority of white people that I know, that I love, that I'm really, really close with, will ever experience what it is I've experienced. They won't. But mm -hmm. it's a matter of whether or not they can be sympathetic to me in my experiences is it shows an open or a kind heart. My thing is just not to be so dismissive of anybody. It's the same reason that even if you're a racist fuck, I'm not dismissive of you. I'll hear you out as best as I can. It's been a little harder nowadays just because we can't even agree on what a fact is. But it's, uh, it, at the end of the day, I still want, I think the worst thing you can be is to be dismissive of somebody. You should listen to them. People have things they think, they That's have things they want to go. But it's just, Trump's American, man. We can't even, <laughs> fucking facts are now opinions. And it's the same, I was talking to James That's earlier. There's a difference between a belief and an idea. And I think that people walk around here with way too many goddamn beliefs and not enough just ideas. You could change an idea. You could easily change an idea. It's when, tough to shake a belief. And when you continue to talk to yourself, you talk to other people about, I believe this, or I believe that, you indoctrinate yourself into not wanting you to change where it is you stand. And that's it, some poor shit. They call it a belief because it's deeply rooted, like a tree. But my final thought was actually, rest in peace, Andre Harrell and um, Little Richard. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Little definitely. Richard, too. Yeah. Um, all right, fellas. Well, uh, thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to see you guys and be in the basement again, fucking recording, because I am already, I'm all going crazy being at home. But uh, thank you. You can tell by whatever facial yeah, fucking hair that is. Bro, look Rich at this shit. One. Yep. <laughs> um, definitely thank you to everybody who watched the last video. Somehow we got uh, racked up a bunch of views, so we're hoping that this video also gets the same amount, if not more. 
follow us on Twitter, the Facebooks, uh, Spotify, and Apple, or uh, iTunes, Pods, whatever the fuck that's And called. like 19 others that we're unaware of, but yeah, you, like you can find them. Uh, if you ever want to get in contact with us, for the three of you out there, tweet us. We'll, we'll, we'll get back at you. But uh, thank you so much for listening. And uh, love you guys. Miss you guys. Love you guys, Bye. too. Everybody Bye. stay safe. See y'all. All right. We just-